Hey guys, I'm back. Let's go ahead and get right into the recipe because this video is pretty long. So start out with the tangzong. In a small saucepan, add 20 grams of bread flour and 100 grams of water and cook that over medium low heat for 3 to 4 minutes. Um, and once it starts to thicken into a paste consistency, turn off the heat and set it aside. Now all this while, you want to use a whisk um, to whisk the mixture constantly. Next, for the actual bread dough, in a large mixing bowl, combine 250 grams of a whole wheat flour, a quarter teaspoon of salt, 25 grams of white granulated sugar, and 3 grams or 1 teaspoon of instant dry yeast. You want to use a spoon to mix them all together. And that is all for the dry ingredients. So next, for the liquid, you want to add 1 small egg and 80 grams of lukewarm milk. For the milk, add 60 grams first, right now, and then you want to save the remaining 20 grams for later and then add all of the cooled tangzong. And then you want to break the egg first, then mix everything together. At some point after 15 seconds, you'll get a rough mixture like this and it'll get hard to mix with a spoon because all the, mix all the liquid is absorbed. So now you want to use your hands to grab the mixture just like so until it gets to a rough ball that'll feel really stiff um, and it'll take around one minute. Next, let's transfer the dough to a flat surface, spread it out, and add in half of the remaining milk from earlier. If you're not sure, uh, just add 10 grams of milk right now. You want to gently knead the milk in. It may splatter a little, but the dough will quickly absorb it. When the dough gets back to being a dough again, you want to add in the rest of the milk. Um, again, if you're unsure, just add 10 grams of milk. Um, now here, the milk doesn't have to be lukewarm, but lukewarm milk will definitely help the dough. So you want to knead the dough for 5 minutes and it'll be sticky and kind of wet, but after 5 minutes, um, it'll still feel, feel sticky and that's when you want to add 25 grams of unsalted softened butter. You just want to spread that around the dough and continue kneading. Once you start kneading, um, the dough will actually feel very greasy and messy. Um, so what I did was, I just kneaded it in a bowl first, then once the dough starts absorbing the butter in, I kneaded the dough on the work surface. Today I used three kneading techniques, the first being push and pull, you guys know about this. Um, so what you want to do is push the dough uh, forward and then pull it back. You want to do that for 10 minutes straight and the dough will still be tacky and slight. And then now you want to switch to the, to the slamming method, slam the dough on the counter with one hand, flip the top side of the dough over and pick the dough up. So slam, flip over and pick. You want to do this for a hundred times and then you'll get this smooth dough on your, in your hands and your hands won't stick anymore. The dough will feel very pillowy at this point, so you just want to make sure that you're following this method. Now, the last part of the kneading process is to use both hands to push and pull. It's the same idea, just use two hands to knead with extra strength. Um, so don't forget to rotate the dough. You want to do this again for 100 times and then you're done. Make sure your dough passes the window pane test. Stretch a piece of the dough out as far as you can until you see a translucent film and you can see your fingers shadows. When the dough tears apart, the hole should have rough edges, not jagged. Um, it took me 30 minutes to get here, but remember, this is a whole wheat dough, so it takes more time and care, but, you, but in, eventually, you get a really healthy bread. And then once you get to something like this, you are done. The key to success is achieving a soft, pillowy, and smooth surface dough. This is true for, for any bread dough, like whole wheat dough and white bread dough. Now you want to form the dough into a ball by tucking the sides underneath and place it into a large bowl. Spray it with water and then you want to cover it with a dry towel and let it proof for one hour or until it doubled in size. Meanwhile, you want to get started on the tastiest part, you guessed it, the melon crust. So in a small bowl, you want to whisk together 25 grams of softened unsalted butter for a little bit just to get it nice and soft. Um, and then next, you want to add 2 tablespoons of dry milk powder and 20 grams of white sugar. Remember, I don't like things too sweet, so add 30 to 40 grams of sugar if you like. 
Now this is actually really simple. All you want to do is just mix that until creamy. Then you want to add in a quarter of a small egg, which is about two teaspoons to a tablespoon. You want to mix that again until combined. Then throw in half a cup of all-purpose flour, mix that in until it forms a cookie dough, about three minutes. It should turn into a soft dough, kind of like a earlobe lobe consistency. Then you want to place the dough onto a um, plastic wrap and place it into the refrigerator to chill for 30 minutes. You don't want to get it too soft nor too hard. After the dough is done proofing, poke a hole in the middle to check if it doesn't bounce bounce back. Then you want to take it out and it should feel very soft and squishy. Then you want to divide um, the dough into eight equal pieces. Um, today mine um, each piece weighed about um, 60 grams. Then you want to roll each piece into a ball and then cover them with a damp towel as you prep the cookie melon crust. So here is the chilled cookie dough um, for the crust. It's still a bit soft as you can see, but firm enough. You want to divide it into four equal 30 gram pieces. Then you want to roll each into a round ball. Now take a ball, place it on the plastic wrap, cover up the top with another piece of plastic wrap and flatten it with a flat surface like a cup um, and just flatten it and it should be 4 inches long. Now take um, a piece of the dough, place it in the um, on the flattened cookie crust, flip the entire thing over and seal the side of the crust onto the dough. Now for the markings, you want to use a scraper to roll from one side over the, to the other side. And that's it! You want to do a kind of crisscross pattern, so do it from one side, then, um, then do it on the other side, if that makes sense. Now that you're done with all the melon pond, you want to place all of them onto a baking tray lined with parchment paper. Um, you don't have to cover them with a damp towel or, or anything. You just want to put them in an oven that is turned off and let them proof in there for another hour. After an hour, you want to take the proofed bread out of the oven and then preheat the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. The buns should look slightly bigger and the markings are much clearer now. As you can see, it's really pretty. Now you want to brush the surface with some beaten egg, then go ahead and bake them at 325 for 20 minutes. After they're done baking, here they are! Super, super pretty. Um, you can totally see the markings. Um, and they looked exactly like bakery style, a melon pond. And for the taste, um, the whole wheat bread was unexpectedly very pretty soft. Um, uh, as you can tell, it's not that uh, soft as white bread, but it's not that hard. Um, so there's still some of that moistness. And then the cookie crust was very much like the bakery style, um, but tastes very homemade. So that's a good thing. Um, so if I had more time to talk in this video, I would tell you guys how good these are, but we're running short of time, so I'll just leave it here. Remember, you can use this whole wheat dough to make any kind of bread. I made four melopon and four green onion bread with this recipe, so that's going to be my next video. I'll see you guys then!